Hey guys, it's been a long time since I did a new guide for orc players. So here is my new bloody beginner orc guide. The last one is several years old by now, so it was time for a refreshment. Why do I call them bloody beginner guides? Well, this is a term I picked up from skiing. I was getting skiing training once in Austria and they called us bloody beginners. Why bloody? Because you fall a lot and hurt yourself. That's why it gets bloody. So let's begin. You start with five workers and your first peon builds an altar. You immediately train two new peons. Always try to have two peons in production whenever possible. Your altar is now starting and the first new peon that comes out, you make a burrow with it. The next new peon that comes out, you make a barracks with it. The next peon that comes out, you fill up your gold mine until you have five peons. You can continually hold shift and drag left click rectangles over them to see how many workers you have. Don't put six inside. All new peons go to wood. And when you altar finishes, you make blade master. Now you're going to make peons until you reach 17 population. And you wait for your barracks to finish. When your barracks finishes, you're going to make a grunt. And when your blade finishes, you're going to scale mirror image and you're going to start creeping making sure to tank with your mirror image. We'll start with Blade Master and a bunch of grunts, and then we're gonna get extra. We're at 20 population. Once we reach 160 gold, we're gonna make second burrow, which is now or a bit earlier. And the next thing we do, our next investment at one grunt and blade finishing and 20 population, we're gonna go to tier two upgrade to stronghold you don't have money for it yet but you can get it soon enough so we pick mirror image we walk to the creep camp we cast mirror image we get near and then we send in the mirror image first and then we attack the biggest level creep first with everything we upgrade to tier two and once our burrow finishes we'll have enough gold for another grunt pick up the items on this particular camp, the level 1s are better to kill than level 2. They deal more damage and they have less health. We finish the camp and we start second grunt. The moment you have 130 gold after your second grunt, voodoo launch. Okay, we finish the camp. We go to the next green camp. We still only have one grunt, so we're no stronger than we were. We summon mirror image, rinse and repeat, send it to tank, and then we kill the highest level creep. I like to put all my lumber peons in a control group that's far away on the keyboard. I actually use control zero. This may be a bit far for you. I do use two hands to reach it, but I like it out of reach so I can't accidentally click them. Once you get level two, you can start an orange camp. You can take almost any orange camp with the army that you have now. Take down ranged creeps first. They tend to do the most damage. We go four grunts total. When image dies, you can summon a new one. And there's a trick about creeping aggro, but it's a bit more complicated. You don't have to do anything like that. If a unit gets attacked, pull it out of range. Make your third burrow after your fourth grunt has been started and keep trying to tank with the mirror image. Try to spread damage so that you can get the regeneration of HP resource unlocked on everybody. By regeneration of HP, I mean everyone has natural health regeneration. So if a unit is full health, you're essentially losing on free income of health regen, if that makes sense. So you'd rather have 100 damage on everybody than 500 damage on one. Again, we're going for the ranged creeps first. And once units drop to about half life, remove them from the fight and rejoin later. Reason is, we'll go critical strike. Reason is, half life grunt will take about one heal self to heal. Now we're gonna make shadow hunter and a bestiary and a war mill. We also start brute strength upgrade in the barracks. 
I like to put both of my unit production buildings in one control group. You can press tab to go to the next. So I would press control group. G for grunt. That's my hotkey. Then I would press tab and press R. That's my preferred system. You may have a different system. Use the heal solve to hurt to heal those that are uh, hurt. And uh, continue. Now that your war mill is building, you can put all your peons to work on that spot in the map. Now, of course, we are completely playing blind. There is a reason for that. I cannot cover all potential scout routes and reactions in a bloody beginner guide. Additionally, beginners are so unaware of what everything means when you scout that you might as well not know and just do the same thing. It's not StarCraft where a rush can catch you unawares. We get Hex, Raider. Generally, there's no cheeses that uh, auto defeats you. So for this image, we're going to send it into their main and that will be our scout. We're going to bring a peon to our expo. And we're making Raiders and Ensnare. Pick up a heal solve and a clarity. And you'll note that I'm like standing still, which is normally part of the rules of thumb of something to avoid in an RTS. That's because I'm not stressing out too much. I'm keeping my game pace low so that you can keep up with it as well. We make Expo. It's fine to put everything in one control group. I personally like to also put my Raider in control group 2 by himself. So 1 is everyone and then 2 is only the Raider. We create this. Again, we can do a bit of tanking with the mirror image like so. We're gonna need another burrow. I like to get fortified defenses. A lot of people skip this, but it's risky. Now, if you want to get really fancy, you can solo creep your shadow a little bit by going about this far away so that he gets level two rather than not getting level two. Again, we heal solve. What did we see? We see one Ancient of War. We don't know what that is. We can just send another image, right, to scout. He's right here, arches and huntresses. My suggestion is anytime you meet someone, first pull back because it gives you time to think and they go in a bad position while they chase you. They tend to like go in a line. So now we're making Kodo after one raider. Focus archers before uh, huntresses. Can use image. We can scout with one of the images again. That's an ancient of lore. That's a tier three tech, so he's gonna want mountain giants or bears or so. The second image, we're gonna scout the expansion with it. Our Kodo is here. Now this is the point in the guide where you can counter what the opponent is doing. It's always fine to open with four grunts, a raider and a Kodo, or maybe two raiders into a Kodo. But here we really start to deviate and to counter what they are doing. So let's say you're facing chimeras or frostworms. You're gonna start making headhunters. Maybe another Kodo, or you're gonna go for a Wyvern, or you're gonna go for another Raider. Everything is fine. I'll make a Wind Rider. I'm gonna show you how you can creep this Magnetar uh, quite easily without taking as much damage, rather than when you just charge into it. I'm not expecting to, you to remember this, but it is kind of a display of how creep manipulation helps you to be far more efficient, because notice the rest of them aren't fighting. The blood, the ogre mage isn't here at all. So it's more of like a showcase rather than that I'm expecting you to counter it. So once I start getting a lot of like units from my bestiary, I like to generally group all of my bestiaries in group two and only my barracks units, well specifically only my grunts in group one. So what we got now is shadow, blades and all grunts in one. This is my attack move army. And then everything else in two. It's a bit strange because you're microing multiple different types of units all in one group. But it kind of makes sense to me at least. Because if I meet an enemy air unit, I'm generally going to hit this group. I'm going to ensnare the air unit with Raider who is on top in the group so I don't need to tap. And then I'm going to attack it with all these units who have piercing damage, piercing damage, which deals bonus damage to air. 
Every now and then trickle in an extra peon on lumber. Note that I sent all five of my lumber workers out of seven, so five out of seven. I sent all of them to my expansion to fully saturate the mine. This is essentially like a loan. We're getting a jump start on mining, but it's gonna beggar our lumber income for some time to come. And that's too bad. But we can fix that by occasionally trickling a peon in. By occasionally trickling a peon in, we're preventing like a large gold deficit when we already made a large gold investment. But we're still going to be able to get lumber for future generation, future tech and so on. So now we have two here, a third one there. And we have one on wood here. So we have four. That's still not a lot. Let's get at least to five. And you'll note that if I hadn't done it, I wouldn't even have enough lumber to go to tier three right now. But now I do. I may or may not spend it on tier three, but at least you can see like, hey, that looks kind of balanced. Had I not made any except two, I would be at 20 wood right now. So we just made a combination of stuff. You can make all kinds of different things. Once your group two is too big, you can start adding your Kodos to group two, uh, to group one instead, Grunt Kodo, and then just keep this army in uh, group number two. You can also learn to use a third control group. I'm going to go to tier three. Because I have a large varied army, I went to go ahead and go for a armor upgrade, which helps everybody. Whereas something like melee attack or ranged attack upgrade would only help half my army. Creeping this one right now. We're getting a real nice big army. We have three of the best items in the game. I hope you'll get as lucky as I do. I have Devotion, which is from the Paladin. I have Unholy from the Death Knight and Brilliance from the Archmage. The best RS I could get. Except Endurance, but I can still make that from uh, Tarn Chieftain when I get to tier 3. Okay, we are really strong. We have our expansion. We're gonna attack now. At this point, we can either get ranged attack or melee. Range tends to do more damage, so let's get ranged attack. Cast mirror image anytime. In this kind of attack move, we've built up an advantage with an expo. I always like to say there's three ways to win the game in Warcraft 3. Either you go and kill him. Alright. Well. There's three ways. Either you have more gold than them by expanding, or you have smarter units than them. Your units counter theirs. For example, Chimera against Ghouls. And the third way is... Uh, either you have more gold, or you have better fights, or you have better units. Those are the three ways. So, better fight, better unit, or bigger army, let's say. Bigger army or better fight, better unit, something like that, right? So either you counter them, you have more money, or you fight with a bigger army. So in this case, I have a bigger army and I have more money. So I have all the advantages in the game. Now we're gonna get drums. I'm getting two upgrades. Uh, I would say second barracks is the best. We're still relatively low on wood. <laughs> Sub to the graph. Hope you enjoyed.